Having a virtual instance of Windows can be practical for a range of reasons, some of which I will go into at the end of the video. I will be installing Windows 11, but this can be used for earlier versions of Windows and server as well. To install Windows, two ISO files is needed. The first one is for Windows, which is found easily enough by searching for a Windows 11 ISO. On Microsoft's website, head down to where it says Windows 11 disk image and follow the steps to get the download link. With the link, you can either download it to your PC, then upload it to Proxmox. Or you can copy the link and take it over to Proxmox and download it directly from there. To download it directly, copy the link and open Proxmox. Head over to the local drive, then ISO images. Clicking download from URL will open a little window where you can paste the link. Before you can download the ISO, you will have to click query URL to make sure Proxmox can see that there is an ISO file there. The second file that is needed is an ISO file with the drivers for virtual hardware. The link on the Proxmox wiki points to the latest release of the file. Copy the link and repeat the process to download the file to your machine. With both ISO files on your machine, you are ready to create the VM. First up, give your VM a name. Next, select one of the ISO files. The second one will be added later. Change the type from Linux to Windows, and version to whatever Windows version you wish to install. This will make a few changes in the coming tabs. All you should have to do in the System tab is set the EFI storage and TPM storage location. These should both point to the hard drive you plan to use as a boot drive for the VM. Bus device should be changed to SCSI. Microsoft recommends that the hard drive is at least 64GB for Windows 11. The cache should be set to write back for stability reasons. Next up is processor and memory. Both of these can easily be changed later to give the VM more or less resources. You can allocate all the processor cores in your system to a VM. The danger is that one VM can use it all and grind the server to a halt. Depending on your machine, half should be enough. The type can be set to emulate different processors. But default or host works great. Give the VM an amount of memory. This should not be more than you can spare. Ballooning will allow Proxmox to only allocate the amount of memory a VM is actually using in real time. Any important VM should be on fixed size, because overallocating memory has a high probability of causing startup problems and crashes for your VMs. It is possible to emulate different types of network cards. The advantage of VertIO is that it should not limit the network speed internally on the Proxmox server. Before clicking finish, do not check start after created. The second ISO file needs to be added to the VM first. Click your newly created VM, then hardware in the menu to the right. Press add to open the drop down menu. There you have to click CD DVD drive. In the menu, select the local drive as storage and VertIO as the ISO image. With that done, you are ready to open a console window to the VM and start the installation. If you do not see the press any key prompt, you might have to restart the VM. Select the localization information that fits you and proceed on. You can add a product key if you want to, or press I don't have a product key. If you want to use remote desktop tools or other advanced features, select the Pro version. Read the wall of text if you want to. Proceed to the next step when ready. Select Custom Installation. Here you should usually see your hard drive. What's missing is not the drive itself, but the driver for it. You have to install the driver from the VertIO ISO file. To do this, click Load Driver followed by Browse. Expand the VertIO ISO and navigate down to VIO SCSI. In that folder, find the Windows version you wish to install and open the folder and click AMD64. Then click OK and Next to install the driver. You should now see the hard drive. If not, you may have set it up with a different bus device and have to install the driver for that one. You can also install the driver for the network to allow Windows to update during installation. The only difference is that you will have to open the NetKVM folder instead of VIO SCSI. Unless you want to format the hard drive yourself, click Next to start the installation. 
When the installation is done, Windows will reboot and you can set country and keyboard again. If you install the network driver, Windows will look for some updates, then reboot again. Give your VM a name before yet another reboot. When Windows boots up again, it's time to configure usage. You can set it up for organization use if you wish. But I will set it up with a personal user. Microsoft is pushing for online accounts, but you are still able to create local accounts as of August 2022. To do this, Click Sign In Options, followed by Offline Account, and skip for now to start creating the username for your VM. Type in the password you want. Twice. Then you have to set up some security questions, just in case you forget your password. Before finishing up, Windows will ask to gather some data on you. This includes things like location, diagnostics, and advertising. When that is done, Windows will do some final setup before taking you to the desktop. The final step is to install the remaining drivers. This is done by right-clicking the Start menu, then clicking Device Manager. Depending on what drivers you installed earlier, you should see at least one PCI device with an error. To fix this, right-click it, then Update Driver. You can find the driver for it on the additional ISO file. Select Browse My Computer. Then browse again and navigate down to the Virt.io CD drive. You do not have to select any specific driver to install. Windows will fetch whatever it needs after you click OK, then Next. So, what are some of the use cases for this? One thing you can do is install TeamViewer, to have a remote connection to your home lab at any time from anywhere. Another option is installing Steam to set up game servers for whatever game you want to play. Or you can make use of the snapshot capability. This will save the machine state, so you can go back to it whenever you want. Then you will be able to go back to when you saved it, if you ever screw up the machine, or download something you shouldn't have. Thanks for watching, there's a written guide linked in the video description.